looking for a sweet way to start your day. Today, Feed Your Family Tonight, Marie, founder Marie Feedbach joins us live from her home with her recipe for oatmeal chocolate chip pumpkin pancakes. Marie, these are packed. How are you? Oh, I'm doing so well, Allison. I'm doing great. They are kind of packed, but that's what makes them so delicious. And I found that the oatmeal really helps with the texture. So that's kind of a part of what we're doing. And you have the ingredients to make yours there along with me. I do. It's it starts with pumpkin okay at one cup of canned pumpkin and then the other wet ingredients are two eggs and a quarter cup of oil okay got to do my oil i did some of this at home just to say for um bringing it here to the station and also just to make time uh make this move a little bit quicker it might take a while it's 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 a, it has a lot of ingredients, but the recipe is really very simple. Yeah. We're gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice, and the lemon juice provides some acid, and what it does is it makes the pancakes get fluffy because we have baking soda and baking powder. And then one cup of milk, and I use whole milk, I've used almond milk if you want them dairy-free, so you can use any kind of milk. And you're just gonna mix those things together with a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. And then I like to add the oats with the wet ingredients. And we're using quick oats today because they are a little bit smaller and they absorb the liquid a little bit faster. If you I'm just have that. regular oats, is that okay? You can totally use regular oats. You just might want to let the wet ingredients sit for about five or 10 minutes before you add the dry ingredients. Okay. I sometimes add the sugar to the wet ingredients too, and that is half a cup of oats and a quarter cup of sugar. I have some that I started and I'm gonna flip them now because they're ready to flip while you start mixing on yours. I tested this recipe with all sorts of different things. I wanted to use buttermilk, but I ended up with almost like a muffin yes. and it, it didn't work. So we're using just regular milk or again, unsweetened almond milk. What makes a good fluffy pancake? Well, it's, it's a, a lot of chemistry. You want to have the right balance of wet to dry ingredients and you want to have the right balance of leaveners. I put in both baking soda and baking powder because I find that that combination creates a fluffier pancake. But anytime you have baking soda without baking powder, you need an acid. Mm -hmm. And that's why we add the lemon juice. So now I'm gonna add one cup of flour, and I usually use white whole wheat, but if you have just regular flour, it works fine. And then again, a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a full teaspoon of baking powder. And that's what's gonna make them really fluffy. And then a half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, okay. which is just my favorite thing. It smells so good. And then you're just gonna mix that together and get your skillet warmed up to like a medium, medium high heat. If you're using an electric griddle like I am, you want it at about 325 degrees. And I don't mix the chocolate chips in the batter. I actually sprinkle the chocolate chips on each individual pancake okay. as it cooks. So, and I like to put a little bit of cooking spray on the griddle or the skillet so that they don't stick. You do have oil in the batter, but there's nothing worse than scraping up stick, <laughs> stuck on pancakes, right? All right, there we go. Okay, I think, I think I'm ready. I think I got everything in there. And you said again, okay, don't put the chocolate chips, just don't sprinkle the them chocolate on. Chips. Right, so you put about a third of a cup of batter for each pancake. You can make them bigger or smaller depending upon what you like. And then I usually just sprinkle a few little chocolate chips over the top. And sometimes I sprinkle more than a few chocolate chips over the top. <laughs> How delicious. <laughs> and they're gonna can... cook. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, they're gonna cook for about two to three minutes on the first side until bubbles come to the top and start to burst and the edges start to look a little bit dry. And then you'll flip them. You were gonna say, Allison. I was gonna say, I can picture like if you didn't want chocolate chips, maybe even putting some nuts or something on top here, would that be an okay option? Oh my goodness, I love them with pecans on top. That's my husband's favorite way to oh, have them, yeah. is with pecans. And we'll do pecans and chocolate chips for him. That's really good too. 
Or you, or you could do them just plain. Well, we're talking about nuts right now, and I have made, I talk about them all the time now, but I have made your baked cinnamon apples now, I believe six times since the first day of <laughs> fall. I think that's an average of what, two, three times a week? Well, I, they, they just taste like fall, don't they? They Those do. Those cinnamon baked apples? Yeah. All right, so I've got my pancakes cooking, and we just let them cook for a couple minutes and then flip them. We're just gonna let them cook for a couple of minutes and then flip them. I have some here that I've already made. I like to serve them with a little bit of butter and um, maple syrup. There isn't a lot of sugar in the batter. They're not super, super sweet to begin with. And so I always like mine with a little bit of maple syrup. And it's just a fun little thing to do in the fall. Yeah. And they just, they taste like fall with all the pumpkin and the oatmeal and they're kind of hearty and... Sure. All right, I'm letting this my, cook right now. I was going to say. Yeah, you're letting them cook. My first ones are done. I can see they flipped on both sides. Okay. And these are um, a thick pancake. And if you have a few minutes to let the batter rest before you start cooking them, it works well. So you'll be, it'll be interesting. As you cook these, sometimes your first ones have a slightly different texture than your second ones. And that's because that batter has some time to rest. So if you notice that, know that it's normal. But... Um, if you can let your batter rest for about five or 10 minutes before you make them, it's going to make the pancakes a little bit fluffier because again, that acid reaction happens and the baking soda and baking powder get a chance to work their magic. Oh, nice. I have always noticed that, that the second round of pancakes, always, they just look a little bit better than the first round, you know, but interesting that, that that's the reason behind it. And I was going to say, as I let these cook uh, for myself, I'm probably going to be whipping some up for Shane and Frank here in a second. In your Facebook group right now, it has really grown and taken off. There are so many people there sharing their ideas for weeknight dinners, breakfast ideas, and asking you questions as well. I really learned a lot from it so far. Oh my goodness, it has been so much fun, Allison, to have such a wonderful group of people. I'm always there to answer questions, but I love it when the Facebook group members help each other. That's really fun. And you might notice that I had the 100th episode of the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast this week, and we are doing a little giveaway. And there is a post tagged at the top of the Facebook group if you are interested in winning some of my favorite kitchen gadgets then you can go in and check in, check into that and get into the contest to win some of my favorite kitchen gadgets as a way to celebrate the 100th episode of the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast. Oh, that's fantastic. Marie, well, congratulations to you for getting to that milestone with your podcast. And we're glad that you get to join us every week, every Monday, right here on Good Morning Cake Land. I'm going to let my pancakes keep cooking. Um, they're our, our stove is a little bit slower, I think, than what you've got right now. So they're taking a minute. But we want to show people how they can get this, this recipe and so much more. You can visit Marie's website feedyourfamilytonight.com. Also, like we talked about, her Facebook group is wonderful. And listen to those podcasts as well, which you can find on her website. Marie, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us.